guy there. Hey, what's up? Hello, it's Lit Life with Miranda Rees, and today we're talking about villains. I love, love, love a good villain. It honestly can make or break a book. And today we're going to go through seven of my favorite young adult villains that I've read and I've loved. Let's get started. We're going to start off by going through the most entrancing villain I have read in a very long time. I'm talking about Queen Levana from the Lunar Chronicles. The Lunar Chronicles focuses on fairy tales, Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, etc. And they're all given a very futuristic twist, like Cinderella's a cyborg. Throughout the entire series, the people on Earth are almost in a war, kind of in a war, at least feeling very threatened by the Lunars. The Lunars are the people who live on the moon, and they have a lot of psychic powers, and they're led by Queen Lavana, who is the strongest of them all. I would say in the main series, Lavana feels a degree up from flat. Like, she is an okay villain, she does evil things, but it doesn't really strike me as amazing. And that's until I got to her side story, Fairest. Her novella, Fairest, provides a well-rounded background to her character. And it's honestly one of my favorite perspectives from a villain ever. She was evil, but it was a logical evil. Like you could see how she made these decisions and how she made these leaps and what brought her to where she is today. I really feel like this book enhanced her character so much more because in the main series, she was evil, but like, we were missing that background and backstory, which was filled in by her novella. Next up, we're going to go with Brutally Evil, aka Lada Dracul. The And I Darken series centers on Lada Dracul, which is a slightly gender-bent version of Vlad the Impaler. Lada and her brother, Radu, were stolen from their homeland, Valahia, and they were raised in the Ottoman Empire. She spent her entire childhood plotting and planning her escape and the future of her country. And when she gets that chance, she takes it. So, to put it frank, she is brutal, she is cruel, and she is amazing. Lada Dracul is the kind of evil villain who knows that she's a villain and she revels in it because it gets her what she wants. She has this I don't know if it really counts as a moral code, but she has a strong sense of duty to her people, of Alahia, and she wants to unite them and keep them safe. And everyone outside of that inner circle, they could die and she could care less and she will kill them if they stand in the way. I just absolutely love how she embraces her ruthlessness in this book and how her moral-ish code guides her and brought her to that extra level. Alright, so next up we're going to hit best protagonist villain, Okiku. Now if you're not familiar with her name, you might be more familiar with her movie, aka The Ring. This book is called The Girl from the Well, and it centers on Okiku. Now she was killed by a nobleman and left to die in a well and she has spent the last 300 years seeking vengeance. And her vengeance is brutal, it is bloody, and someone's gonna die at the end. However, also over those 300 years, she's developed a conscious of sorts. She's still very much fueled by a desire to get revenge, but now she channels that against child murderers and trying to wipe the world of them. She spies a teenage boy with a dark secret attached to his soul. And for the first time in a long time, she finds herself curious and wanting to help. I love this book. Okiku is one of those characters where you're just not entirely sure if she's ever truly the villain or the hero. I mean, she's clearly under the villain category because she just murders so many people. But also she's murdering the right people, so she's kind of a hero in that sense. 
I just love the way the author gets the perspective of a murderer in this one, a um, supernatural murderer to be precise. The way Okiku looks at the world, the way she interacts with it, is very what in line with what I'd expect a 300 year old ghost to look and act towards life. And to me that was absolutely fascinating to read. I love getting books from the monster's perspective and this one was absolutely no exception. Next up is the best fake out villain. So slight spoilers here because there's really no way I can describe this without spoilers but I'm talking about A Court of Thorns and Roses and this is your last chance to turn away Rysand. <laughs> So Rysand in the first book of A Court in Thorns and Roses is one of the definite villains. We follow Thera as she falls in love with the king of the summer court. And then she realizes in order to break the curse of the court, she has to go up against Amarantha. And she is like the big bad. And her right hand man is Rysand. Rysand is very much playing into his evil nature. He is known as the King of the Night Court, and those are all like the evil, crazy, horrible fairies. He also plays with Fair's mind, and he does all these kind of things that make him seem very evil. Once you get to A Court of Mist and Fury, which is the second book, you slowly begin to realize that what Rysand says and does in front of Amarantha it's completely different from who he is as a person. He contains a great secret in order to keep his people safe. And he spent the last 50 years pretending to be on Amarantha's side in order to save his people. This is one of those cases where I was honestly shocked when I read that book and I found that switcheroo. And it doesn't happen too often in YA where they really get me. It was a beautiful villain to hero flip, and honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, so next up is the best descent into villainhood. And I'm talking about the Queen of Hearts from Heartless by Marissa Meyer. So Heartless is a take on the Alice in Wonderland early origins of the Queen of Hearts. In Heartless, we follow Catherine before she becomes the Queen of Hearts. So we know where her character is going to go, but we don't know exactly how she gets there. Catherine is a teenager. She loves baking, and her greatest desire in the world is to open up a bakery with her very best friend. Unfortunately, her mother has decided that Catherine is destined for greater things, a.k.a. marriage to the king. However, Catherine's not interested in the king at all. He's bumbling, he's goofy, he's just not attractive. And she tries to find ways to let him down and it just doesn't work. Then Catherine meets Jest. And he's the court jester and at first she dismisses him, but the more she spends time with him, the more she realizes that she's falling in love and that this court jester might be the one for her. However, as I said earlier, we know where this story is going and there's absolutely no way she's going to be able to end up with the love of her life. I absolutely loved the transition that Marissa showed in this book. I feel like it's so rare where you start off as a really good character and you end up super evil, but the author really achieved that well and that transition was honestly, I would say, gorgeous. Okay, so then next up we have the most redeemable villain. And I feel like this one I had a few choices, but the one I definitely think takes the cake is Holland from the Shades of Magic series. So in the Shades of Magic, there are four different types of Londons. There's Grey London, which is kind of like a Victorian era our world where there's no magic. There's Red London, which has happy, exciting magic. White London, which has terrifying and cruel magic, and Black London, which has wild and almost sentient magic. There are very few people who can travel between the Londons, and Holland is one of those people. He's called an Antari, and he's sent on all of these different missions that often end up with somebody dead. However, as the series goes on, we find out that 
Holland is not the person everyone assumes him to be. Then he actually has not a lot of free will towards doing these actions. He has this deep moral code and responsibility that he feels towards his people. So he's willing to do just about anything, but he's also forced to do anything that the king and queen want. Throughout the book, all of the other characters really hate on Holland and they just go crazy over everything he does and they just don't trust him. But you also get his perspective and you understand how and why. So for that, I definitely think he is the most redeemable. And I feel like the phrase, every villain is the hero of their story, really applies to him. Because what he does is incredibly heroic. Just no one else sees it. Finally, last but not least, a villain you love to hate. Dolores Umbridge. I mean, honestly, could have been anyone else. So Dolores Umbridge is from Harry Potter, and she makes her big appearance in the fifth Harry Potter book as the Defense Against Dark Arts teacher for that year. She is a sweet villain, like saccharine sweet, like sickly sweet, like your teeth are rotting out of your mouth sweet. She's covered head and to toe in pink, and she justifies all of her actions as just following the ministry's orders. But in reality, she delights in cruel acts and torturing the children, taking wands away from muggleborns, and really enforcing the blood purity of the magical world. She is just this character that everything she does is horrible, and yet you also can't turn away. To be frank, she's terrible. And I honestly wouldn't have her any other way. She makes an amazing villain and she's horrible and I love it. I mean, I don't love her, but I love the tension and the way she drives the fifth book. I don't think it'd be the same without such a strong evil character. So that's it. That is seven of my absolute favorite young adult villains. Let me know down in the comments below who your favorite villains are and why. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so, so much for watching and happy reading. Bye.